How's it going everybody? Hopefully y'all are having a good day or night whenever you are watching this. I decided to try something a little bit different with this narration and I'm actually not going to be speeding up the battle as fast as I normally do. I'm actually going to make it a little bit slower. That way I don't talk as fast as I usually do in my other narrations. And comment down below on what you guys think about it, if I should stick to the slower narrations or the faster narrations. Personally, I do want to try to slow down on my narrations, but it all comes down to whether or not you guys enjoy them or not. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm also not going to be uploading daily anymore just because tomorrow I'm going to go back to a regular school schedule, which means I will be uploading every other day or every two days. So yeah, I uh, don't know if that's good or bad news for you guys. But there wasn't really anything too threatening on my opponent's side of the field except for the Raikou and the Mew, depending on what kind of sets they are. And uh, speaking of Mew, he decides to lead off with it as I lead off with my Vitini. That automatically tells me he more than likely isn't an SD or a nasty plot set, and more than likely is he still the supportive set with like taunt, softboard, will-o-wisp, and one offensive move, which means I can freely go for the U-turn, U-turn out into my Gligar, as he actually does end up making a very good play knowing that I wouldn't go for the V-Create because he does have the Chandelure, he went for the taunt as I U-turn down to Gligar, and I really can't do anything to this Mew, I don't want to get will-o-wisp or possibly hit with a random Ice Beam, so I decided to switch directly into my Victini as he goes for the Zen Head, but more than likely just scouting out to see what I wanted to do, but because I know he's in a comfortable position to where he knows I'm not going to go for the V-Create and leave him Mew. I am going to go for the V-Create. Unfortunately now I do lure in the Chandelure but I have one of the best counters for a Chandelure which is Porygon 2 with Trace and it actually turns out that his Chandelure carries the Flame Body ability. Now before anybody says, oh your opponent's retarded for having Flame Body, he's a loser, he's an idiot, the idiot, just shut up. That is not the case. Flame Body on Chandelure is actually very, very good, and it's mainly run just for Trace Porygon 2. Because after tracing the Flash Fire, Chandelure can really do nothing to Porygon 2 outside of Trick It. And as you saw there, that Fire Blast is almost a 2 KO. Luckily, I think it came down to Min or Max, and I was able to deliver the second one and get off a good chunk of damage with the Thunderbolt. As he does reveal to me that he has the energy ball, I'm just going to switch into my Suicune because I know that a Scald will be able to take it out as he leaves it in. Maybe he thought that this would take me out, but I'm a Suicune. Any non-stabbed grass move will not take out Suicune. Like, honestly, Suicune has not really been seen much in UU in the past couple of months. I don't know why people don't use this thing. It's, it's really good. It's a giant threat and definitely an underrated Pokemon in my opinion. But uh, he's going to bring in Heracross. I don't want to risk him possibly being like Sword Sands and wanting to SD hoping that I burn him even though I do have a teeny he will destroy something on my team. So I thought switching into him on top would be the safer play as opposed to bringing in Gligar allowing me to get up my Stealth Rocks. He does just turn out to be a choice set as he goes for the Stone Edge then he's going to switch out into the Frost as I make a switch out into my Roserade. Now normally he would have the switch, uh, the better end of this uh, double switch but because I know I can take an Ice Beam I'm actually just going to stay in and break the potential Focus Sash that the Frost Slash might have. Although he reveals to me that he has the Pain Split I know he's not going to be carrying the Sash and more than likely will be a bulkier spread obviously because he has the Leftovers. So I am pretty positive I can take an Ice Beam, but thinking that he might just go for the Pain Split again, I decided to bring in Suicune. Also I thought that he might have wanted to bring in Heracross to take the Giga Drain, then force me to switch into Gligar, then double switch back out into Frostlass. But no, he just does end up going for the Ice Beam and on hindsight I should have left in Roserade and taken out this Frostlass because that actually really would have helped me if I took out the Frostlass as you'll see later on in this battle. So knowing that he's not going to go for the Taunt, I decided to go for the Calm Mind because if I did stay in and try to go for the Scald, I could have a chance to burn the Frost Slash, making it even easier to take down, as he actually ends up switching into the Raikou, hoping that I might be able to take a Thunderbolt or a Volt Switch, I decide to stay in, go for the Scald, as he actually reveals to me that he is a sub Calmon variant, which means if I allow Raikou to get up behind a free substitute and allow it to Calm Mind, I could easily be swept, which means the only real thing I can do at this moment is leave in Suicune to just constantly go for Scald until eventually he finishes me off. Unfortunately, because I'm going to lose Suicune, Gligar has become the number one nuisance on his team and the only real thing I can do to Gligar is hopefully trick my Choice Scarf off to it to shut it down. But if that Heracross is Scarfed, he does outspeed my Victini and could potentially take me out. So as long as I have him on top in Gligar, and I do trick off the Scarf to this Gligar later on in the battle, I really don't have to worry about Heracross, so it isn't going to be too big of a deal if I do trick it off, if you get what I'm trying to say. <laughs> um, anyways, I got a free switch in the Victini, go straight for the V-Create because I didn't want to risk him possibly going for the Substitute after I go for the U-Turn, 
but he actually does make the good play, switches in the Gligar, knowing that he more than likely would just go for his Stealth Rocks, I decided to switch into my Roserade, which means I can now get up Eldar Tox Spikes, poisoning the Frostlass and the Raikou, making them a whole lot easier to take down. Unfortunately, if this Heracross does have Guts, I will also give it a boost, but then again, I have Gligar, which can literally take Heracross one-on-one, -on -one, so I really have nothing to worry about it. As it goes for the close combat, even with the rocks, now, I only did like 20%. And knowing that he's going to be forced to switch out, I'm going to be able to get up the stealth rocks, which means I can get that extra original damage on the Heracross, making it a whole lot easier to take down as well. Just because the poison really isn't going to matter too much on Heracross, because Heracross don't tend to stay in that much anyways. And knowing that the Ice Beam is very, very obvious, I stay in <laughs> and go for the Earthquake. Why the hell did I do that? L looking back at this, I that was really, really stupid of me, but... Thankfully, I'm able to bring down the Frostlass to a point where even if he goes for the Pain Split, the Earthquake Poison combination will take him out, or if he takes me out with the Ice Beam, the Poison will still take him out, and I have now lost Gligar, which means I can't really afford to go for the trick on this Gligar. Unfortunately, that's the only real solution I see at this current time in the battle. And on the double down, I bring in Victini as he brings in Gligar knowing I really can't do anything to it. I decided to actually go for the U-turn because I thought that the trick was going to be way too obvious. But no, he stays in and goes for the roost. And that really, really aggravated me. That I was actually a little bit mad about that because I had a free chance to go for the trick. But I didn't take it. And now I have to bring in Roserade, constantly go for the Giga Drain. Hope when he does go for the roost that I can get a free switch into my Bikini to then trick the scarf off to him. As I keep going for the Giga Drain, he's going to end up going for the Earthquake this turn, which was a bad play on his part. But not wanting to risk my Giga Drain not taking him out, I decided to switch into my Bikini. But he makes his own double switch out with the Heracross, knowing that Heracross can take Giga Drains for days. He more than likely just wanted to bring it in to be able to knock out my Hitmontop because my Hitmontop is the only one real thing stopping this Heracross from sweeping that and the Scarf on my Victini, which I was about to trip off. Luckily, uh, this misplay on his end is going to switch complete momentum into my favor because now I can knock out the Heracross, knock out the Gligar, and knock out the Raikou with one V-Create each. But because I am at minus one speed and minus one special defense, I am going to be forced to switch out and I'm just going to bring in Rosary basically as death fodder and on hindsight, maybe I should have brought in him on top, but it really doesn't matter. And yeah, he's just going to finish me off with the Hidden Power Ice. I can now bring in Victini, click V-Create, disintegrate the Raikou, and disintegrate the Gligar for the 2-0 victory in my favor. I definitely did not think I was going to win this battle just because of that Gligar, but that weird switch in the Heracross uh, really ended up switching momentum into my favor, allowing me to win this battle. And yeah, definitely had a lot of fun. Hopefully you guys did enjoy it. Also, uh, leave what you thought about these slower paced narrations, if it seemed any different or if it seemed the same. I don't know. I want to get some feedback on what you guys thought about it. But with that, enjoy the rest of your night. Enjoy the rest of your day. I should be posting a new video on Thursday or Friday whenever I get the chance to. And I do believe I'm out of here. Uh, later.